I think one of the most important things we need to learn to do as Christians is to think for ourselves in a biblical way, like biblically think for ourselves. We, we all know the passage that talks about not being conformed to the pattern of this world. And I think that as Christians, for the most part, we, we do okay with that. We go, well, the world's doing this, but that's not really biblical. My concern, though, is I think there are patterns in our American church culture that we just follow without really thinking, is this the most biblical way to do it? We just do it because, well, this is what every church does. It's, it's always easiest to just follow what someone else does, but I believe that God's called us as believers to check the scriptures and go, okay, is this most biblical? For example, when we built this sanctuary, I, I went around to different churches and I looked at their buildings and thought, okay, do I like this? Do we like that? Is this us? Is that us? And, 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 and we, we came up with a building plan. Now, I'm not saying that it was wrong to build this, but I'm just saying I never even asked the question, should we build a sanctuary? I just figured that's what you do when there isn't enough room for people, you build a bigger building because that's what everyone else does. And so now we're going out of this, should we build another? And I just followed a pattern. I just did it because I figured that's what churches do. And I didn't even have the maturity at that point in my life to even ask the question, should we build a building? Is there a more biblical way? Again, I'm not saying this is right or wrong. I'm just saying that as believers, we need to think through all of our actions and not follow patterns and really think biblically and say, what would God want me to do and what looks most like the New Testament? Because if we don't take the time to think through those things, we'll do what's easiest and it's always easiest just to follow someone else's pattern. Actually, a lot of my mindset changed a few years ago when some Jehovah's Witnesses came to my door, oddly enough. They, uh, they started talking theology, we started uh, getting in these different discussions, I started pointing different verses out to them, and then ultimately at the end of it I said, okay, you guys believe that Michael the Archangel is the same person as Jesus Christ himself? I go, but there is no way on earth you can look me in the eyes right now and tell me that you actually came before God one day and said, God, show me the truth, and then you read the Bible for yourself, and at the end of it, you came to the conclusion that, oh, I get it, Jesus and Michael the Archangel are the same person. <laughs> There's no way you can tell me that. Someone fed that to you because you would never get that from reading the Bible. And so I just encourage them. I go, look, I, I'm not going to tell you what to believe. I don't want to feed you something else. I'm just encouraging you. Would you just get alone with the Word of God, pray to God and say, God, show me the truth and then read it and see what conclusions you would come to. And they, they walked away. It was actually a really good discussion because they walked away and going, you know what? I think I do need to do that. I think I will do that. And I don't know if they ever did, but after they left, I, I started thinking to myself, was I really fair to them? I mean, did I really do that? Did I really one day say, I really want to know the truth? So I, I sat down with the Word of God and began to study and came to these conclusions. Um, honestly, that's not how it happened for me. And a lot of things were fed to me as well. And so I've been on this journey of just thinking to myself, okay, if I were on an island and I just read this book over and over again, and let's say this is the only, this is the only influence I had and had anyone preaching to me, I had no theology books, I was just on this island reading this thing over and over, what would I believe just from my readings and studies of this book? Would I come up with church the way we do it in America? Probably not. And I went through this journey of just trying to figure out my whole belief system and thinking through how much of it was fed to me and how much of it really came from the Bible itself. Think about it, if, if all you had was the Bible, would you come to the conclusion after reading this that 
To become a Christian, you would pray a prayer and ask Jesus to come into your heart. And, and I know I am totally stepping on some toes right now. I'm just asking, is that really what you would find in here? Or if you only had the Bible, would you come out thinking, you know, I need to repent, and be baptized, be filled with the Holy Spirit. I mean, what would you believe if it were just the Bible? And again, I am not saying that we shouldn't listen to people because there are some amazing teachers in our world and God's gifted some people to be teachers. I'm just saying that biblically we're taught that we should test everything we hear and see if it's really in this book. I realize that chapter 5 is the most difficult chapter to read in the book um, and I had a real hard time writing it. But I, I'm hoping that in your discussion this week that you'll actually be as honest as you can be. Like maybe this could be the most honest week you've had in your discussions. And here's what I want you to talk about. I'd love it if you just told everyone in the group if you had any doubts over your salvation after reading chapter 5. Just be honest with it. And, and, and yet at the same time, I want you to be really, really careful because this could very easily become this thing where we go, gosh, I don't know if I'm truly a believer, so I'm going to try harder and I'm going to do more things. I'm going to work harder. Because that's, that's the wrong answer because Revelation, and when, when Jesus is talking to the lukewarm church in Laodicea, the answer was not, you're lukewarm, so try harder. No, he says, I'm standing at the door and I'm knocking. It's this idea of Jesus wants to come into you and begin this real relationship with you where he helps you make those changes in life. And he's the one that begins this relationship. And it's about him coming in and dining with you. And I would hate for this to become this, this guilty, shameful type feeling that we live with and, and this, this uh, determination to try harder because then we're missing the whole point of the book. I do want you to be honest with where chapter 5 left you, but I want us to remember that the solution to living a lukewarm life is not trying harder. The solution is falling madly in love with Jesus Christ.